it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to show you something you can copy from the Kokonakis forehand to help improve your forehand. Now, first, this video is courtesy of 12K GP Tennis on YouTube. Make sure you go in the description below and give them a sub. I've been using a lot of their content lately. It's just because it's awesome content. So I want you to look at this position right here. If you're someone who takes the racket way too far back, if you've been told that your swing is too big or you constantly feel late when people hit the ball fast and deep, then it's important that you work on not breaking the plane and not taking the racket to the wrong side of your body. Well, something really simple you can copy from this Kokonakis forehand is to have your shoulder, your elbow, and your hand all at the same height. You'll notice his shoulder to his elbow and his elbow to his hand basically draw an L. Let me show you my forehand in this same position. Now, in no way am I saying that <laughs> I'm as good as Kokonakis. I wouldn't win a single point if I were to play against him. But you can see when I turn on my forehand how the back, my, my you know, back armpit is exposed. You can see the same thing here, right? You can see that his back armpit is exposed. When you have that high elbow, it helps keep the racket more on the hitting side of your body. So if I just draw this line, I'll show you that my racket doesn't go to the wrong side of the line, but rather it stays to the right. So watch my racket stay to the right of that line. So watch Kokonakis, same thing. There's the line, watch his racket, stays on the hitting side of his body. The reason this helps you is it means that your swing is not going to be as big. If you're someone, again, who goes way back here, sometimes the problem is because your hand is way above your elbow, right? So your elbow's here and your hand's here. So when we draw from the elbow to the hand, it goes up. When you draw on my forehand, elbow to the hand, and his forehand, elbow to the hand, it's level. It's parallel to the ground. That's what's going to keep the racket on the hitting side of the body. This is something very simple that you can copy. It doesn't mean it's easy, but it's simple. So here's another forehand. He turns high. You can see the racket tip basically is pointing at this coach over here. Uh, it's, an, it's just amazing, this next-gen forehand with the tip of the racket pointing you know, at the opponent, butt cap pointing at the camera, strings now facing to the back fence. But here it is. Shoulder, elbow, hand, all at the same height. That's what keeps the racket to the right, if you're right-handed, and doesn't allow the racket to be too big. Love it. There's the closed racket face when the butt cap is pointing at the ball. That's when it's really important that you make sure that your racket face is closed. I've been harping on that lately with a lot of my videos. Um, another thing that I mentioned last week in a video is at contact, your non-hitting hand should be visible over your non-hitting shoulder. And I shouldn't say should, it's okay if it isn't. But if you really wanna make sure that your hips are rotating as you hit the ball, have your non-hitting hand visible over your non-hitting shoulder when you view yourself hitting from the back. It really facilitates hip turn. So go out and practice this. Turn with both hands on the racket and have your back elbow up so that not only is your back armpit exposed to the camera when you film yourself, but your shoulder, your elbow, and your hand are all the same height. You work on this, there's no doubt. You're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.